Hey guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and we have an It's So Emma line of paper that makes vintage blocks. And our newest one was designed by Lori Holt, and it's the Vintage Kite Paper. And if you look at this block, it has lots of points and was traditionally pieced using templates. And um, I don't love templates, so we made a paper version of it, and it's gonna come out exact. You're gonna love it. Inside each pad, there are 42 pages. Each page makes one block, so you can make 42 blocks. The instructions are here, and we have different quilt layouts. Now, what you're gonna love best about this is you're gonna get accurate results for a very low price. So let me show you how easy it is to make a block. So Lori designed this one and we only printed this one in the six inch size. To make the block, you just need some general sewing supplies. We're gonna take a ruler and add a quarter plus, a seam roller, fabric glue, rotary cutter, scissors, and pins. And I would say these three right here are your most important. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to make a block and I'm gonna give you some quilt options at the end. So for one block, you're gonna need four dark fabrics that are three and a half by four and a half inches. And you're gonna need eight light fabrics that are the same size, three and a half by four and a half. And what we've done is we've used the same background twice. So you can see we've got four backgrounds that we cut twice. So a total of eight three and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. And you can either duplicate them, you could use eight different ones, or you could just do one background. And having this layout is really good because it gives it a scrappiness but keeping the two next to it does give it some cohesion. So the first thing you'll do is just pull one of your papers out and we have these printed on nice thin paper so that your stitches won't be pulled out. The most important thing to do is to stitch with a short stitch length. I like to stitch with a 1.5 stitch length. And this block is very different than our previous foundation papers. So on this one, on this darker dotted line, you're just gonna cut on that first. And what that's gonna do is give you four separate units. So we're gonna start and make four units and then put the units together. So I'm gonna just lay the units like this. Now your dark is gonna go here and your lights are gonna go here. And what we're gonna first do is, I love the add a quarter plus because it has this paper edge. And I'm going to crease between the one and the two and the one and the three because it makes it easier on the other side to see what you're doing. So I'm gonna do that on all four. And this is an optional step that not everybody does. I have sewn with a lot of people who don't do this step at all, but this just makes it easier for me. So I have that prepped a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one and then I'm gonna come back and make the other three. So you can see the full uh, display of how to do one unit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I like on the paper to use the sew line glue pin. And number one is dark and I'm gonna just put a little glue. That's probably too much, but that's kind of how I do it. And I'm just gonna completely cover where that is. Flip it over and you want this fabric face up, turn it over. I'm actually gonna crease here and you can just add and cr crease the other one later, but I like to do them at the same time. And I do that because I have the glue and the glue is gonna keep that in place. And these will just be discarded now for this one, I'm just gonna pick two backgrounds. They're the same backgrounds, it doesn't matter which ones, and we're gonna add them this way. And the one thing to remember is you're gonna add them long ways and not short ways. So they're gonna be added like this. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to make one unit. Use a short stitch length and you want to just cover 
kind of in the center, just like this. I'm gonna just hold it in place, turn it over, and I'm going to stitch. Now, I'm not gonna start at this line. I'm gonna start a quarter inch away so that my stitches don't come out, and I'm gonna stitch all the way across on that line. I stitched a little extra out here and a little extra out here, and that will help your stitches stay secure. From here, I'm actually not gonna go to the iron. I'm just gonna use the quick press seam roller. From here, what you can do is pull this up and cut this off, and then add your second piece. Just like that, turn it over. Now, I did starch my fabrics, and since I starched them, when I turn them over, they kind of stick together. Now, from here, with the paper, you don't want to use steam, so I have the steam off, and I'm just going to do a final press. One thing I wanted to mention is I added side three before side two. It really doesn't matter, but um, I'm sure some of you are gonna catch that. But basically, you want to have four of these units for each. So I just did a gentle press, and now I'm gonna show you what to cut and what not to cut. Now, if you look on the paper, it'll say first trim line on these two sides and final trim line. So what I'm gonna do is on this first trim line, I'm gonna trim exactly on it. So put your ruler exactly where it is and cut. And this will be waste. The second line that says first trim line and trim. Now this final trim line you don't wanna do yet because this is gonna trim up your block. But I don't want the bulk of this out here so I'm just going to trim this off just so it's out of the way and then what I'm going to do is prep the next few go to the sewing machine and do the same exact step and make the remaining three units on camera and on this you'll notice there's a tiny bit of waste and that's okay that kind of comes along with using foundation paper if you use templates, you would have no waste, but you would not have the accuracy that you get from using the paper. And today we're using Lori's fabric. It's called Cookbook. And I'm just gonna put two backgrounds with each. We're gonna go to the sewing machine and sew these. So now we're going to trim doing the same thing. Cut on the first trim line on both sides. So you're going to cut on the first trim lines on both. And on this outside line that says final trim line, I'm just going to cut some of the bulk off, but I'm going to leave the lines. And I'm going to do that on all four. Each block has four units, and what you'll do now is put the darks in the center, and you can arrange it however you like. Um, you could make it match the cover image that we have, or any placement will work. And it's best at this point to put two units together and two units together. And what I have found that works best on this is put right sides together, and you will notice that both of these seams press towards the background. 
but it is gonna come out just fine. It might be a little bulky, but it will be just fine. So we put these really nice dots on the back. Put your pin in that dot, and then put the pin on the other side in the dot. And when you do that, they're gonna be lined up exactly correct, and I just let my pin sit up, and then put a second pin, and then you'll do the same thing at the end. At this very end, put a pin there, and that pin should go to the same exact seam on the back. And it does, so I'm gonna keep that flat and put a pin. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here. At this intersection, and it should go exactly to the back, and if it doesn't, you just move it around a little bit. So really important that you have three seams, and when testing this, starting with the center seam is gonna be the easiest. So I'm gonna do that one. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, starting with the center seam. And I'm gonna leave the same foot on my machine that is the open toe, and I'm gonna not use a quarter inch seam. What I'm gonna do is just sew exactly on this dotted line. And again, I'm gonna start a quarter inch away, and I'm gonna just keep sewing these together. And the reason why is your stitches will come out if you don't give a little bit of extra stitches on the edge. So stitch this seam and this seam. So I have the seams sewn and what I found is right here I think it's best if you take the paper off here on these two because if you don't it's gonna be harder to get out later now it's totally optional you can try it both ways but I did find more accuracy this way just that line you sewed just take those little quarter inch pieces off and of course you know it's personal preference you can wait till the end it's just harder to get them out you'd have to use like a tweezer to get some of the pieces out and if you're having trouble taking the paper off, you can switch to a size 90 needle and that will help. Now what I'm gonna do here is this paper really holds this nice and flat and I kind of feel like you don't even really need to iron. What you wanna do first is make sure your points match and they do and I'm gonna put them together and I'm just going to flip the seams. So I'm gonna flip the top seam to the right, the bottom seam to the left, and I'm just gonna pin right there. And when we do the overall press later, we'll press this down. Line these up, use the, the dot. And this paper does look intimidating at first, but once you make a block, it's kind of addicting and you might not be able to stop because they come out so cute and I've never been able to make a kite block before. So now that I can, I'm super excited to make more. And now I'm just gonna start a quarter inch away, a quarter inch past, and sew that final seam line. Now from here, you can see one seam goes one direction and one goes the other. I would just press that gently. It'll just lie all on its own. Set the seam press to one side and just remember no steam and it's going to lie nice and flat. So this is how my block looks on the front and you can see these bulky seams. They're just like a pro. They just eased right in there. So you're going to turn that over and you can trim it two different ways. You can either cut directly on this solid line with a rectangular ruler or since it finishes at six and a half inches unfinished, you can take a six and a half inch ruler, put it on top, and the most important thing is you wanna be on that drawn line, but also you wanna make sure your points are right on that stitch line. And so I have my ruler right on that straight line, cut two sides, turn it around, and then you cut your remaining. And you can see that my points match from here, you'll take the paper off. Just bend your paper back and it should come right off. Now, some people will leave the paper on until they have all their blocks put together, but I do prefer to take off my paper at this point. 
And here's how beautiful your block looks. It was super easy, very fast. Let me give you some quilt options. If you look under the front cover, we have different quilt size layouts. So you could make a wall hanging, lap, large lap, crib, twin, queen, king, or table runner. And we give you the number of blocks to lay out. So for example, the wall hanging says 16 blocks laid out four by four. So you can do all of these sizes with this block and I have a second quilt to show you. We love this so much that we put together this option for you, which would make a great table topper for your house. So for this quilt, we did something a little bit different. If you look at these blocks that we just pieced, these have an assortment of backgrounds. What we decided to do on this quilt was use different prints throughout. So we used the stitch collection and we used the Jolly Bar and we picked one background from Lori's B background. So you get a different look with scrappy backgrounds than you do with one background. On this, we sewed two blocks together by two blocks. We added an inner border that was cut one and a half inches wide. We added middle borders that were cut three inches wide. And we cut our outer borders three inches wide. This is the backing and the binding we used and Marion Bott quilted this one for us. So the vintage kite paper is super easy with our new foundation paper pads. I hope you try them. And if you have any ideas for future paper, let us know. We have several in the works for you right now. Super excited about it. And I'll see you next time.